who doesn't say we don't keep things classy with expat audio so what we're looking at today is how do the pro manufacturers design their rubber switches to go uh, you know these rubber silicone switches so that the user interface uh, can be backlit and so on very very easily and so what we're looking at here is I have a Newmark uh, Orbit this is a wireless controller with a huge array of, uh, of, of, of switches and there's a a rotary encoder here in the middle and so on that you can use and there's also two accelerometers inside so you can do like special DJ effects now the reason I look at DJ products is because they're the ones which most likely have backlit buttons as well now in comparison I also have I'm gonna have to move for this one this is a Behringer model a CMD PL1 MIDI controller now when I push the buttons here there's much more of a click to them and so I suspect there's an actual tact switch behind these. So let's start by seeing how this Newmark product, uh, this Newmark Orbit, has been has been designed for this purpose. Uh, I'm using a, a Phillips screwdriver. It's a small one. It's not a regular one where you can, you know, get uh, in the dollar shop or whatever. That sounds like that's undone. So it looks like it's one giant piece of molded uh, silicone rubber. Let me make sure I've got all the screws here and things to one side. Not bad. Okay, there's two shoulders, shoulder buttons here. Uh, hopefully you can see those at the top here. And it looks like they're connected to a single PCB with a, a uh, st which still has a, 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 a rubber, um, a silicone rubber uh, top to it so that it provides some bounce back. But the real fun one I want to look at is what happens if I take this off. And there we have it, folks. So what we're actually looking at here is an array of uh, conductive rubber dots, which are used to press down on, on, these, uh, on the patterns on the PCB. So let's zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure if we can get focus as well. Come on. Let me switch to macro mode. There we go. Oh, that's nice. So now you can actually see a pattern. There we go. So you can see the pattern here. So I believe all of these are connected together so that it doesn't matter which one of the conductive pads conducts, but as long as one of them does, uh, you get a good pattern. Now the other interesting thing here is actually they've got some kind of plastic as well, some plastic array which is used, I suspect, to uh, you know, hold the rest of the array together when, let me zoom out, no I can't zoom out in macro mode, okay let's zoom out, so you don't, there we go, so it holds the rest of the array together because if it's not on there, here we go, are you ready, and, okay, so if it's not on there, you don't get that much response from the system. I believe that's right. So let's put these back in. And I'm actually going to insert it into the plastic so that. Gosh, this recording with a camera in front of you is hard. Okay. Oh, does that sit through here? Where does that go? And you'll see that there's little dots on all of these which are used to align with the PCB so that the rubber sits always flush and doesn't move back and forth in the system. Quite a, quite a clever little design actually, to be fair. This, this uh, Newmark Orbit was purchased for about 35 US dollars uh, here in the US. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's very good value considering the engineering effort that's gone into this. I've actually been fortunate enough to meet some of the uh, design management at Newmark over the years with, with my daytime job, and really they are skilled professionals when it comes to doing this kind of stuff. 
the breathe is stuff like bread and butter. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so that's definitely something of interest here. I'm not going to look any further behind. It's typically going to be the um, you know the wireless module they have in here, some processors and so on. But you could see very very quickly, and let me put this back into macro mode. You could see very very quickly. Let me zoom in. See very quickly the LEDs in the middle of the array there, and it looks like it's a multicolor LED. Just, uh, just a uh, uh, well, it's not like an o a regular 0603 or something. It is a squarish looking uh, multicolor LED. So let's have a look at this. Behringer CMD PL1 controller. Um, so this was ordered from uh, eBay as a, as is, you know, kind of not tested, not working. Um, so you know, I, I'm not actually a DJ, but what I'm actually looking for again is how do these, how are these switches built? Uh, you know, how is the system physically put together? What can I learn from uh, the kings of cheap here? on how to make something that's designed to take a beating, you know, uh, every every night uh, at a venue, but at the same time, you know, uh, offers great backlighting and so on. So uh, let's, let's take this darn thing apart. It looks like there are four screws, and that my regular electrician's screwdriver is good enough here. I don't need any kind of specialized set or miniature screwdrivers. Thank you very much, Behringer. Oh, and look at that. There's actually plastic on the, still stuck to the, uh, let me put this in macro so you can see it. There's actually plastic still stuck to it, which means they've probably used these screws to thread into the plastic on the other side. Great way of saving money. They're designed for switches. Now, bear in mind, their switches look like this. So you see the lock and the load button there? They are actually pushing down on tactile buttons along with two LEDs from the looks of things. And I'll bet you one of them is like red and the other one is green or some method where they can mix them together, you know, uh, using PWM and so on to create different colors. Now let's have a quick look inside the case here to see what tricks uh, they did at Behringer. So there's definitely a lot of guidance around here for things like um, the LED arrays up here. Um, you know, the, these belong with these circular LED arrays for the uh, uh, rotary encoders. Um, but what they've actually done here is create light guides, if you will, or or shields, I don't know how else to describe it, you know, that, that sit around each of the LEDs, ensuring that this LED does not pollute into the space of this LED and so on. So that's pretty smart. And designing into the case means that it's one, uh, um, uh, not extruded plastic, it becomes one injection molding. Now, the other thing I noticed, which was pretty smart, is that they've actually uh, well, created Look at this. This is this blew my mind when I first realized what it was doing. They have a piece of plastic, which actually, if I line it up, would sit like that on the PCB. And then they have this rubber silicon mold, oh, which is actually pretty tough. Um, I think that would be you know more like a Shaw 50 or something like that in terms of hardness. And that literally. Now, uh, I'm going to point out a couple of things here. This has little points here, little nubs that, that come up. So if I turn it on its side, you can see it. And they actually fit into placeholders on the plastic. And what that means is that then the, the switch array doesn't float around on top of the uh, on top of the plastic piece. Now, one of the one of the things that I've been wondering about since I even started this project 
uh, well, the project I'm working on is how do they manage to make sure that you know they, they, they get they get that lovely clicky feeling without damaging the switch and so on. So let's have a look at how they've done that. I want to look a little bit more at this plastic array. Hold on. Okay, so one of the things uh, to notice on how these buttons work and so on is no, notice if I push up on the top corner here. still wants to bend forward more than it wants to bend back. See, pushing back away from it, yeah, there's a little bit of movement a lot, but if I push forward, oh yes, it definitely wants to move down that way. And so the next thing I thought of, well, how, how do they create that? And the trick is, even without this plastic frame, right, it still does it. The trick is, this shows very well, this darn rubber is white, so it doesn't help. There we go. You can see here that the rubber on the top side here, near my finger, is actually in the shape of a U. In fact, let's pick this nearest switch where we can see it. There we go. It's in the shape of a U, so there's more give there. See how that gives more? Whereas on the other side, which doesn't tend to give, it's in a straight line. These two, one there and one there, they're in a straight line connection to the frame, which is very interesting um, because it, it'll, it allows then this tab on the front here to push on the actual connector, the actual tact switch. So if I sit this on here and I sit this on top, and there's, that should line up pretty nicely. You'll see now if I zoom in real close, and I'm gonna to have to go in tighter to kind of go in tighter than this and metal. There we go. Just underneath you can see the tack switch. Hello. And you'll see now, even if I push at the top of this switch, you can hear the tack switch being pressed. And the nice thing about doing that by keeping this tack switch at the corner like bottom side not smack in the middle of the of the product is that I can actually put LEDs then under the box and they shine and diffract beautifully so one little press and you can hear the click very very nice um, but then you can still have those LEDs shining bright so some pretty smart engineering by Behringer here. Um, I'm sure there are other manufacturers that may have done this first and so on, and maybe Behringer are copying, or maybe they're not. Um, but um, I like the way they've achieved this because for, for, for me, as a potential you know very small volume manufacturer, I could 3D print this plastic base and have you know this manufactured, this rubber uh, cover in, in you know single switch covers or, and so on, or you know an, an, an array of three or something. But either way, very, very cool stuff. Now I have to work out how it goes back together. Um, and I'll have a look to see if there's anything else on this switch array that's worth uh, sharing with you guys.